Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure and function of centrioles, cilia and flagella. And all of this is for the OCR specification. In the last video we looked at the cytoskeleton and we saw that one of the fibres that form the cytoskeleton consists of microtubules. Microtubules are polymers of the protein tubulin. And microtubules play a number of roles, including the movement of organelles. Now microtubules play another important role in eukaryotic cells, and that is in the centrioles. We find a pair of centrioles in lots of different eukaryotic cells, including in animal cells. Certain relatively simple plants and algae can have centrioles. But we don't find centrioles in flowering plant cells, and it's really important that you learn that. Also, centrioles are not found in most fungi. So as we've seen, animal cells contain a pair of centrioles, and these centrioles are made of microtubules. The two centrioles lie at right angles to each other, and are often found near the nucleus. And together, we call the pair of centrioles the centrosome. So as we've seen, centrioles are formed from microtubules. Now centrioles have two important functions, and both of these functions are linked to microtubules. Firstly, during mitosis and meiosis, centrioles play a role in the assembly of the spindle fibres. Remember that the spindle fibres are also formed from microtubules, and how these microtubules are arranged into spindle fibres may be organised by the centrioles. However, you need to remember that plant cells also form spindle fibres during cell division, but flowering plant cells do not contain centrioles, so this means that centrioles cannot be essential for spindle assembly. Now centrioles play another role in eukaryotes, and this is in cilia and flagella. Cilia are hair-like organelles that extend from the surface of certain cells. I'm showing you here the cilia in the trachea leading to the lungs. By beating in waves, these cilia can waft dust particles along the trachea and push them out of the lungs. We also find cilia in the fallopian tubes, where they waft an egg cell towards the uterus. Some cilia do not move. Instead, these play a role in sensing the chemicals around the cell, for example in the sensory cells lining the nose. OK, now a flagellum is a whip-like organelle that we find on the surface of certain cells, for example sperm cells, and the role of the flagellum is to move the cell. Flagella are longer than cilia, and if a flagellum is present on a eukaryotic cell, then there's usually only one, whereas cells can have a large number of cilia. Now both cilia and flagella share a common structure. Running through the centre, we find nine pairs of microtubules arranged in a circle, with another pair of microtubules in the centre. Scientists call this the 9 plus 2 structure. Using energy from ATP, the pairs of microtubules can move relative to the pairs next to them, and this creates the bending motion of these organelles. Now, where a cilium or a flagellum forms depends on a complex of proteins, and a key part of this protein complex is a centriole. So the formation of cilia and flagella is another function of centrioles. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the structure and function of centrioles, cilia and flagella.